Negotiating your salary should be easy. So why does it feel so hard? Unlike they'll tell you no, think you're greedy, and take the job offer away. Well, because salary negotiation isn't something that you do every day. And if you're like most, you've never been on the other side of it. And let's face it, you probably don't feel super confident as a negotiator. But by the end of today's video, you are going to feel confident AF in a salary negotiation because I'm sharing my top salary negotiation tips that are going to help you increase your offer, mostly without needing to negotiate salary at all. If that sounds good, tap the like button and let's jump into it. The first salary negotiation tip is know your numbers. The last thing you should be when you get a job offer is surprised. Unless they're offering you way more than you were expecting. You should know or at least have a ballpark idea of what you should be making. And really the biggest mistake that people make in a salary negotiation is not knowing what they should be making. And that salary negotiation mistake will cost you. One of my old clients was in a job search and she was targeting a hundred thousand dollar salary. This sounded like so much to her. It was way more than she was making. But when we did market analysis considering her market, her job, and her experience level, we identified the range she really should have been looking for was somewhere between $120,000 and $150,000. That is a big difference, my friend. She was lowballing herself by at least $20,000 is the point. And I mean, what would you buy with an extra $20,000 a year? I think I would get a boat. Luckily, we were able to catch it and she adjusted the amount that she was asking for. And when she got her next job offer, she increased her salary by $50,000 just by targeting the right salary. Knowing that, I know that you're like, fantastic, but I don't know where to start. The great news is the internet can help you. There are online resources like Payscale, Levels, LinkedIn Salary, and Glassdoor that can inform you not only on the industry standards based on your local market. If you're looking at bigger companies, you can even see what those specific companies are paying for the level and role that you are applying for. But wait, there's more. Some professional associations also compile annual salary reports, or you can simply start asking your peers what they are making. We're also seeing an increase in salary transparency laws coming into play. Thank you. Colorado for being a trendsetter. And that brings me to the second salary negotiation tip. And this one is really important. And that is to remember that it's not about you. Now, I know that you're probably watching this video because you have a job offer and are preparing to negotiate salary, or you're expecting to get a job offer soon. And there's something you need to know about that job offer. They have decided that they want to hire you. You did a badass job in the interview process of making them realize your experience and your UAQ is exactly exactly what they need. You're the candidate who's bringing the most value to the table and that is why you're their top choice and getting the job offer. Now your job in a salary negotiation is to collaborate with them to agree on a valuation for the role. Notice the valuation is for the role, not you. I hear the saying all the time and I absolutely hate it. Get paid what you're worth. You will never be paid what you are worth. You, my career bestie, are worth more than any company or individual could possibly pay you. Your compensation is an appraisal of what you are expected to contribute. That's it. And it makes it a heck of a lot easier to have a salary negotiation conversation when it's not about how much they value you, but how much they value the role. Which actually brings me to an important side note. When you are the chosen candidate, not only have they chosen you because they've determined you to be the best fit, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance going on in their side because now you have to choose them. And they don't want to be rejected, but also because they need to rationalize their choice. And behind the scenes, I've seen folks that are moving budgets and getting high level sign offs to meet a candidate's demands. So we need to talk about the next salary negotiation tip, which is to tell, don't ask. At some point in the job interview process, someone's gonna lean in and ask, what are your salary expectations? Or you got the job offer and the salary needs to be negotiated because Let's say Awesome Abby gets a job offer for $80,000 and she had given a range of eighty-five dollars to $95,000. So she asked for a call to ask for more money because we never negotiate over now, which ask do you think is more likely to get Abby the range that she's looking for? I really need this job and I really was hoping it would be a little bit higher. Is there any wiggle room? Or this opportunity sounds awesome and I know that my experience and expertise are really going to help bring the team to the next level. However, I need the number to be a little bit closer to 88,000 for it to work on my side. Also, let me know which approach you've taken in the past. Now, no shame if you have asked the first way. We've all done that at some point in our 
careers. But the second one is more likely to yield a higher result. Not only does it skip the desperate sounding statement, if you back up, you'll hear it, but it also gives a specific number that the person that she is working with can go and advocate for. If it's in their budget, they can make the decision. If it's not, they know what to fight for. Again, everyone at this point is in agreement. They want to hire you. And clearly communicating your needs is going to help them make it happen for you. Also notice that the statement said closer to. This doesn't box you in if the number that you were saying isn't your walk away point. Like maybe you're still a little bit flexible here. So if they come back with 86 because it's the best that they can do, Abby can consider it. Which actually we need to talk about the fourth salary negotiation tip because this is a trap that way too many professionals fall into and it makes them underpaid. Stop negotiating on non-compensation. Well, you can negotiate it, but stop exchanging it for compensation. The whole negotiating for non-comp advice, I feel like is really abysmal and I particularly see it marketed towards women on blogs, in books, and in videos. So why do I hate this advice? First of all, your entry pay dictates your pay as long as you were there. Your pay raises are going to be based on your salary and your bonuses might be too. And if you're in a location where they can still legally ask you about your pay history, Yikes. Further than that, the non comp items that these trash articles are telling you to negotiate for instead of being paid are often low value or just walk away points anyways. For example, I came across this article on a recruiting agency's website recently, and it says, salary negotiations often include some give and take on employee perks and benefits. Mm is that benefiting? It may be less costly than a bump in salary for the employer to give ground on extra vacation days, flexible hours, or especially today, a work from home schedule. Are you kidding me? You're gonna take those extra PTAO days? I mean, you should, but that's a whole other video. Are flexible hours useful when they're demanding 60 hours a week or everyone else is on a standard nine to six schedule? And working from home, when was this written? January 7th, 2020? If your job doesn't require you to be on site in order to do your work, I consider it a red flag for work from home to not be at least a sometimes option these days. Now don't get me wrong, it's not that you shouldn't negotiate for these things, especially if they're not already included. You absolutely should, but it's not an either or. Ultimately, I think this is really important. Even if you are not coin operated and don't really care about the extra few thousand dollars for this reason, it shows how much they value you or don't. No matter what, when you have a bad day, you're gonna feel like, I don't get paid enough for this. But how much worse will it feel if you got grounded down in a salary negotiation and accepted less than what you wanted? And that brings me to salary negotiation tip number five. Don't feel bad for asking to be paid fairly. Like how toxic is this whole belief system where companies who are profiting hundreds of millions or billions of dollars can't pay fairly? I've been really lucky to get to know a lot of you. And I know that you are humble, considerate, and fiercely talented. I also know that you are not asking asking for outrageous compensation. You are asking to be compensated for the value that you bring. And I hear too many companies who gaslight people that they want to work for them to make them feel awful for asking to be paid. I thought you were interested in the opportunity, but I guess you only care about money. Unless you're a volunteer, you are there to get paid. And unless they are not for profit, the whole dang company exists to make a profit. In fact, the less they pay you, the more profitable they are. They know that. Any company that is trying to guilt you for being valued as you walk in the door, in the only way that you can at that point, which is money, or tries to make you feel shame for exchanging your labor for a paycheck, you know, participating in capitalism, is throwing up red flags. And that brings me to my final and most important point. Remember, you can say no. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Just because you have a job offer does not mean you need to accept it. It's an invitation, not a summons. I know this is easier said than done, but there's a lot of power in saying no. Setting that boundary for yourself and being valued is a good thing. Saying no can really make that job offer skyrocket in terms of salary. I wanna be really clear. Saying no should not be used as a salary negotiation tactic. Is it possible that they come back to you with that much better offer? Yes, it's happened to me twice. But is it guaranteed they're going to do that? No. And is it even a good idea for you to take that offer if they suddenly meet your demands? Maybe, but maybe not. There are several valid reasons for them to not have made your target salary offer in the first place and for you to have gone through the salary negotiation. But if there doesn't seem to be a great reason and there's other job offer red flags, 
that's a good sign that you really should be walking away for good. And if you don't know what those job offer red flags are, I want you to go and watch this video right now where I break them down for you. But before you go, if this video helped you, if you enjoyed it, tap that like button, really helps my channel, makes you my favorite career bestie, win-win situation going on. While you're down there, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, my friend, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.